All right. Good evening, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. It is 6.05. Um, I know that there are some internet issues and, and things like that. Obviously, we're all still getting used to working in a virtual world. Um, so there will be people joining us as, as we get going here, but um, we're going to go ahead and get started. It looks like there's 86 of us here ready to go. Um, so let me start by introducing myself for those of you who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet. My name is Mr. Epley and I'm the principal at GCMS. I know I let, met uh, quite a few of you last spring as you were touring the school, school and uh, certainly over the summer we had a couple open houses. But for those of you I haven't met, uh, nice to meet you uh, virtually. Um, so a little bit about me. I uh, am from the, south, from the south suburbs of Chicago, so grew up here, then I went away to the University of Miami in Florida for undergrad, and then I moved to Houston and ended up uh, teaching there in inner city uh, Houston Independent School District for four years, then had the opportunity to come back home to Chicago. So after being away for eight years, uh, came back home, and I was a founding teacher here at Noble's first and only middle school, Gary Comer College Prep Middle School. So I've been very blessed to be a part of our community for the past decade. So I started here as a teacher and was the Dean of Students and Dean of Instruction. And now I'm going into my sixth year as principal and 10th year at GCMS overall. So absolutely uh, love it, love our families, our kids, our staff. Um, just very, very blessed to be working here and eager to welcome you to our community. So first thing that I would like to start with is just doing uh, just a brief introduction to our staff. I'm not going to have everyone talk because our staff is 32 people and that would eat up quite a bit of time. Um, but you can go to our uh, GCMS remote learning student portal, uh, which the link will be in the newsletters or certainly the future newsletters. Uh, looks like Brad just linked the, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson, our Dean of Operations, just linked the uh, website for you. So if you click the chat bar, you can see the faces uh, as I'm introducing our staff. But uh, we'll start with sixth grade advisors. So advisory is kind of a big deal here. So you'll, you'll break out into your advisor rooms after we meet whole group. You've hopefully already met your child's advisor over the phone. Uh, hopefully they gave you a call last night or uh, last week rather and introduced themselves. So we have seven sixth grade advisors. We're aware that the majority of families who are joining us tonight are probably sixth grade families. We know that we also have some seventh and eighth grade transfer families as well. But if you are a sixth grader, if you have a sixth grader, then you probably see your advisor's name on the screen in front of you right now. So we have four male advisories, which are led by Mr. Junk, Ms. Walker, Mr. Brown, and Mr. Pruitt. And we have three female advisories, which are led by Ms. Williams, Mrs. Edmondson, and Ms. Beristain. You'll notice that even though they're all sixth grade advisors, they all hold different positions within our school. So I won't read those off. Um, but the idea is for our scholars who are with us three years, most of them will have their advisor as a teacher one of their three years with us. And so, um, you know, they're not all sixth grade teachers. Moving on to seventh grade advisors. So for the seventh graders uh, on our call, you'll notice there's seven uh, seventh grade advisors. So again, we have four male advisories in seventh grade led by Mr. Minkins, Mr. Fisher, Mr. Reinberg, and Mr. Moore. And then we have three female advisories in seventh grade led by Ms. Martin, Ms. Benjamin, and Mrs. Tippy. And then in eighth grade, uh, we have a few eighth grade families on our call. So welcome, even though you're only going to be with, with us for a year, we are eager to, to have you with us. And so uh, in eighth grade, it's the reverse. So we actually have four female advisories in eighth grade, a few more females in that grade level, and three male advisories. So our male advisories are led by Mr. Keene, Mr. Dunlap, and Mrs. Diaz. And our female advisories are led by Mrs. Pook, Ms. Parsons, Mrs. Buchanan, and Ms. Hampton. So... Again, uh, if you click that link that Mr. Johnson sent out, you can put a face to a name. So if you have not yet uh, met your advisor face to face, you can kind of uh, get a quick visual of them and maybe even scroll through and try to find them uh, on the, uh, the faces here. Because we know you can't see 92 people at once. So you're probably clicking that arrow. So uh, maybe you can find your advisor. 
All right. And then in addition, we have some staff members that are not advisors uh, currently. So uh, I'm not an advisor. I've graduated two of my advisories. My first group of boys are now, uh, man, juniors in college. That makes me feel old. They're juniors in college. So I taught them back when they were in sixth grade. And my second group of boys are juniors in high school. And so most of the people on this slide have been advisors in the past, um, but they support in some other way. And so uh, Ms. Norris uh, is our Dean of Culture and Ms. KP and Ms. Dew are members of uh, our culture team, Mr. Johnson and uh, Ms. Hampton I know is an advisor, but there are uh, Dean of Operations and Assistant Dean of Operations. Ms. Gross is our Dean of Scholar Supports. Mr. Grady and Mr. Batia are both teachers uh, who are just not advisors this year. Uh, Ms. Augusta has graduated a couple advisories. Uh, Ms. Mino is our social worker and Mrs. Briggs is our other Dean of Instruction. So one of our Deans of Instruction is a sixth grade advisor and the other one is not an advisor this year. And then of course, uh, I'm Mr. Epley and I am the principal. All right, um, our goal is just to be a whole group for uh, under 60 minutes. So we're gonna shoot for 45 minutes, but definitely try to keep it under 60 minutes before we break out into advisory groups. And um, I'm gonna talk briefly. I only have a couple more slides and then I'm gonna hand it over to different folks on our leadership team to talk us through the three pillars of Noble, which are scholarship, discipline, and honor. But the key uh, point that I wanted to really harp on here is parental involvement. So this awesome. is one of my favorite quotes. This is uh, a quote that you'll see in our front office. It says, at the end of the day, the most overwhelming key to a child's success is the positive involvement of parents. And I know that um, I'm a parent as well. I've been married 11 years. I have three uh, little kids of my own. And I know that the older our kids get, um, the more we, we, we think we need to release them. And I, I think to a degree that's true. Um, but I want to make sure that our parents know that these are just such pivotal years, these middle school years, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Our kids are just very malleable and really uh, establishing the habits that are going to um, be the foundation for not only um, what they learn, um, but who they become and the type of uh, young men and young women that we want them to be. And so your involvement is just so, so key uh, during these next few years. And especially in this remote environment. I know that, uh, well, I don't wanna make any assumptions. I assume that most people would rather be in person. I certainly would rather be in person, um, both I'm um, speaking as an educator and as a parent. Um, but safety is first. And uh, until we feel that uh, it, it is safe to, to resume, uh, we're going to engage in remote learning and we're going to do our best job and put our best foot forward. And we are probably more dependent on parents than ever um, in this way. And so we're going to go through what our remote schedule looks like. Our two deans of instruction will unpack, hey, what can you expect? When does our school day start? How frequently are in that, they're in classes? That sort of thing. So we'll get into that later in the presentation. But we know that your involvement is going to be so key in terms of setting your scholars up to make sure that um, they're continuing to learn, even though they're not in a physical space in school, but they're continuing to learn, they're continuing to grow. So I uh, wanted to emphasize that point. Uh, one other slide here in terms of a way you can explicitly get involved, and that is through our PAC. So we've had a parent advisory council um, since we started at GCMS, and Mr. Reinberg uh, is the teacher who serves as the liaison. You'll find out more about that. Uh, when you break out into advisory groups and you'll see his email address uh, when you go to the student portal, the link that Mr. Johnson put out, or you can ask your child's advisor. Um, but he's a great contact for you to, to, to follow up with in terms of how you get involved in the PAC. Um, the kickoff meeting is, uh, mark your calendar, September 23rd, 5 to 6.30. Of course, it's going to be virtual. Thanks for posting that link again, Mr. Johnson. Uh, if you open up that chat on the bottom, whether on your cell phone or your laptop, you can uh, click that link and you can find um, people's pictures and email addresses. And eventually, you'll find a link to the Google Classroom for each teacher. And so that's going to be a, a key website for you to have um, you know, bookmarked on your computer. All right, with that said, I think that was my last slide. Yes, we're gonna turn it over to our two deans of instruction. So we're very blessed to have uh, two phenomenal instructional leaders combined. They have 12 years of GCMS experience. They have both had incredible results in the classroom, both in terms of the growth that their kids have experienced, as well as the student culture and the buy-in that they had there. And so now um, they get to coach our teachers and, and uh, make sure that uh, the ceiling is high 
in terms of what we're able to achieve with our scholars. So I'll turn it over to them, uh, Mr. Pruitt and Mrs. Briggs. I almost forgot to unmute myself, but good evening, everybody, uh, GCMS scholars and families. Uh, my name is Mr. Pruitt, and I'm the Dean of Instruction for Math, Science, and Physical Education. And to echo what Mr. Epley uh, said, it's great to see everyone tonight and all the excitement within the chat. Uh, I'm getting very excited to officially start the school year next Tuesday, and I'm hoping everybody uh, is as well. Uh, over the next several slides, Ms. Briggs and myself will be reviewing several things. Uh, first, our academic classes our remote weekly schedule, learning platforms that we'll be utilizing, GCMS class overview, and then academic requirements and grading policies. At GCMS, we offer sixth graders five core classes, reading, English, math, science, and physical education. Seventh and eighth grade, however, they will have six classes. So seventh graders will be taking US history in combination with physical education, and eighth graders will be taking a class called seminar. Before introducing our remote learning schedule, which will be the next slide, uh, I want to acknowledge that this way of learning is going to be new for most of us, and we will require, like, it's going to require a lot of patience and communication uh, in between staff and parents. I know also that there'll be a lot of questions that arise during this time, especially about the schedule. So please uh, be sure to record any questions that you have, especially if we're not able to answer them right now. And hopefully we'll be able to answer and address those in advisory sessions and the Q&A that we'll have uh, at the end of orientation. Uh, our model for remote instruction is grounded in both asynchronous and synchronous learning opportunities. And for clarity, I have the definitions here on the slide, uh, just so that when we get to the next screen, uh, the schedule will make a little bit more sense. So synchronous learning is um, our live in-person classes. So scholars and adults need to be in the same place at the same time uh, through a Zoom link for the learning to take place. The second aspect of our schedule and how we're going to be doing uh, instruction this year is through asynchronous uh, learning materials. So um, through our synchronous learning opportunities, for example, content classes, office hours, advisory, and then small group intervention classes. And we'll dive into those uh, a little bit later. Um, but if scholars are unable to attend our synchronous live classes, we also offer asynchronous options. And asynchronous learning is uh, our opportunities for scholars to complete work on their own time, at their own pace, not in the presence uh, of a live class. So if scholars are unable to attend our synchronous classes this year, uh, they'll be able to access all of our learning materials within uh, teachers Google Classrooms so that they can complete the work that they missed synchronously, asynchronously on their own time. So teachers uh, will be assigning asynchronous work as well that will supplement the instruction that they have uh, each and every day. So again, what we'll be doing is combining both live sessions with asynchronous work to make sure providing a well-rounded uh, curricular experience for your scholars. Sure that I can uh, get through this as clearly as possible. And again, uh, we'll have an opportunity to clarify this during our breakout sessions. Uh, but, our, but first, our week is broken up into two major sections. On Monday and Tuesday, scholars will have their reading, science, fitness, and U.S. history classes. On Thursday and Friday, scholars will attend the rest of their classes, which will be math, English, and fitness or seminar based off the grade level. On the far left side in blue, you'll notice that all the instructional periods are highlighted. And then in red, we actually have our office hour, hours sessions. And then in black, we have our built-in breaks. So that's kind of what all the col uh, colors are indicating there. Our academic day will begin at 8.30 with more. I'll just have a short break before heading to their first period classes, which will actually start at 9.35 and they end at 10.28. So this first period is a synchronous lesson where scholars are able to log in and actually uh, attend a class in person. And it's important to know that all of our classes are going to be 45 minutes. Following all academic classes will uh, be a 30 minute optional office hour session that will be designed to meet the needs of scholars within that class and will also be held by the content teacher. Scholars will attend second period from 10, I'm sorry, from 11 to 11.45. 
Again, followed by a 30 minute office hour session. And then finally, their third period class will come from 1 to 1.45. You'll also notice that at the bottom of this um, schedule, there are some light blue boxes that say small group intervention or instruction. Those will be opportunities that will come up for scholars. We're not gonna be starting that next week, but uh, it'll be a, a very strong academic support that will offer some of our scholars who might need some additional support with remote learning. And there'll be two windows for that. It'll be uh, 230 to 315 and 315 to four. And again, uh, we'll touch base about that um, throughout the year and here on the next slide. And then lastly, uh, on Wednesday, we reserved uh, extended um, time on Wednesdays outside of academic sessions to provide differentiated sessions for our school and to address grade level meeting needs, not so differentiated sessions. Sorry about that, Mr. Johnson, I appreciate it. So with all that has happened over the past six months, our priority is to ensure we are providing a safe and supported environment for our scholars and families. Uh, therefore, we are going to be intentional with providing scholars with the necessary academic supports to close any learning gaps and to accelerate scholar learning. And so we will be offering things like office hours, small group intervention, uh, reading A to Z, which is a literacy program, and then also our synchronous sessions <coughs> to help make sure we're meeting scholars' needs on all fronts. Furthermore, we want to ensure uh, we are also showing emotional needs through daily advisory and differentiated sessions that we'll offer our scholars on Wednesdays. And this is something that a lot of us are gonna be familiar with. Obviously, Zoom is what we're utilizing right now, and this is gonna be the primary platform and the only platform that we use to conduct all of our in-person and synchronous lessons, whether it's advisory, office hours, or our content classes. And then I also know that a lot of us probably have experience with Google Classroom, whether it's from last year or programs over the summer, but Google Classroom will be our virtual home base for every content, uh, for every, every content and for all of our teachers. So scholars will have access to all learning materials for each of their subjects, and they'll actually have access to an individual Google Classroom for each of the contents that they are in. So it'll be obviously where all work is posted and important communication uh, happens between teacher and scholar. So now we're gonna go ahead and of our uh, STEM and fitness education here at the middle school. Uh, as you can see in science, we have uh, for our sixth graders, they'll be uh, delving into the life sciences, while seventh grade will be focusing on earth space science, and then eighth grade will be diving into physical science concepts. For math, uh, for our sixth grade, we focus primarily on uh, common core state standard instruction, but then when we get to seventh to eighth grade, that's where we begin to differentiate a bit for our scholars' needs. So seventh grade, our scholars will be placed either in uh, accelerated math or in algebra, and then eighth grade, we have pre-algebra, algebra, and geometry. Now, this is the second year we've actually provided a physical education course. Unfortunately, we'll have to uh, make this work over uh, remote learning, but I'm still very excited to offer uh, these opportunities to our scholars. Uh, and the way our uh, PE program is structured is through uh, physical fitness exercise and then also uh, a component of health content. And uh, the health content will encompass the items that you see outlined here from wellness all the way down to fitness, leadership, and culture. And uh, now I'm gonna hand it off to Ms. Briggs and she'll walk you through the humanities side of our curriculum. Yes, good evening, everyone. My name is Ms. Ina Briggs and I am the Dean of Instruction for Reading, English, and Humanities. Um, so glad that you all were able to join us tonight. So I'm gonna talk to you about a little bit about your reading and English classes, um, as well as your humanities classes, and then give you a few other expectations around academics. So first, every student will take a reading and English class twice a week with our remote schedule. Um, through those classes, they're gonna experience mastery of knowledge and skills, a focus on character um, and high quality work through our newly adopted curriculum, which is called Expeditionary Learning or EL for short. In addition to that, if you are a seventh grade student, you will take US history class where you will also be required to take and pass the constitution test this year. If you are an eighth grade student, you will take a class called seminar, and this is a class that examines major ideas that shape culture and history of America. Reading A to Z. So as Mr. Pruitt mentioned, one of the 
academic interventions that we have this year is called Reading A to Z. And this is where we really need parents to be partners with us. So this is a time block that we built into the day that will follow immediately after morning advisory. And it was meant specifically for students to have time to read independently. So every week they're reading and English teachers will assign them a book along with the reading log. And so this will account for their independent reading and journal response writing grades. So it's gonna be really important parents that you're monitoring, making sure that students are using that time specifically for reading after morning advisory. In addition to that, we have Sora, which is an app that students will be using. And this main purpose of this is basically for them to access the text that will go along with the curriculum for reading and writing. Um, there are no formal expectations for you as parents, but students, again, will be using this as a means to access the books that their reading and writing teachers will be sharing with them throughout the week. In terms of academic requirements, scholars have one academic requirement to be promoted to the next grade level or if they're eighth graders in order for them to graduate. So scholars must pass all core classes, including advisory and PE, during the regular school day and school year. Any scholar who fails any core class will be expected to enroll in Saturday Academy or summer school in order to make up the class at the next available opportunity or a penalty makeup class may be imposed. Scholars unable to pass all classes at least one week before the school year starts will not be promoted to the next grade level. So this is extremely important to keep in mind that all core classes students must pass in addition to advisory and PE. Our grading policy has slightly shifted this year given the remote nature of our learning. So given the remote environment in which our students will be learning in school year 2020 and 2021, it's especially important that students' grades reflect what they know more than their ability to access the lessons. So as a result, our school is going to provide multiple opportunities for students to demonstrate mastery of material, including a generous retake policy to ensure that students have adequate opportunities to demonstrate mastery regardless of their level of access. So that basically means we don't want scholars inability to access the materials to prevent them from passing. We're gonna institute a gradebook range of 50 to 100 rather than a zero to 100% scale. And this change creates a less penalizing gradebook structure for our students. Lastly, as a parent myself, I know one of the most important things for me is wanting to stay in the loop with my children's assignments and what it is that they're expected to do every week. So as a parent, one of the benefits of uh, joining Google Classroom is the fact that you'll be able to get weekly email summaries. And these email summaries pretty much include missing work, late work, any upcoming work that the students have been assigned by all of their teachers or advisors, um, and any class activities, announcements, or assignments and questions that have been posted by their teachers. So it's gonna be really important for you as parents that you join your child's Google Classroom, um, and more information about how to do that will be given within the upcoming week. But again, we just wanna make sure that you are aware that this is how you can stay in the loop as parents, um, given the remote nature of this fall. So that was an overview of academic expectations. Um, I thank you all for listening. And as Mr. Pruitt mentioned, we're going to have more opportunities for questions in our open forum a little bit later. I'm going to now turn it over to Ms. Norris, who is our Dean of Discipline. Um, welcome. I'm Ms. Norris. Um, this year we're switching to uh, my title is Dean of Culture. Um, this is to reflect all parts of the role of the culture team instead of just part of it, right? So yes, discipline is still a part of the role, but so is social emotional support, safety, community, and voice, um, both in the building as years pass, but also virtually now. Um, but I couldn't do any of this without the team, right? So first we have Mr. Moore. Him and I have been doing this together for seven years. We also have Ms. Dew, who started with us in the beginning of the year um, last year. And our newest member is Ms. Porter. And Ms. Porter may be new to our culture team as staff, but she's been a part of the GCMS family for a long time. When her son entered um, with us as a sixth grader, he's now there at the bottom. Um, he's a freshman at Western Illinois this year. So she's been a part of the, the, the family for a long time now. Um, at GCMS, um, our belief of high expectations has not changed, but our approach has. As always, scholars will be held accountable, but now through reflective and purposeful consequences that create a culture of community, voice, and self through discipline. 
So how are we gonna do that? It's gonna be a social emotional learning focus, uh, strength-based support, teaching of skills versus just a punishment and restorative approaches to be able to build up our scholars. Okay. Um, we will guarantee a safe and supported classroom um, virtually as well as when we get back into the building. And so what does that mean? Um, teachers and students will co-create and uphold classroom expectations in order to ensure that classroom is safe and supported. Teachers support students by creating classroom envir environments that welcome, affirm, and value the identities of their students. Teachers consistently support students to uphold classroom expectations by helping them understand their in individual impact on the learning community. Challenges to classroom expectations are immediately addressed by teacher and or students. And when those things, when the safe and supported classroom cannot happen, that is when the culture team will come in and even have virtual support. So that will be monthly, being able to access the culture team through our Google office, um, having monthly challenges, office hours and resources for our family. Um, we'll have culture team and parent guardian meetings, mediations for peer to peer and staff to scholar, um, cyberbullying investigations and reflection meetings um, continue. We can't do any of this as Mr. Epley, Mr. Pruitt and Ms. Briggs has talked about without you. We have to hear from you. Um, this is the furthest I felt from your <laughs> from our scholars ever um, and if I don't hear from you I won't know what's going on and we won't be able to address it as a school and a culture team um, we want you and your scholars to feel supported as you would if we were in the building and I cannot and we as a team cannot do that without you um, so please reach out and just for one more reference um, here is all the culture team contact information myself Mr. Moore, Ms. Dew, and Ms. Porter um, and you can reach out to us for anything that you need. Thank you. All right, it looks like it's time for, uh, for uh, Comer Education Campus and the Gary Comer Youth Center time. Uh, so welcome everybody, my name is Will Irvin. I'm the Associate Director of College Prep at the Gary Comer Youth Center. Uh, welcome to the, not just the, the middle school, but also to the Comer Education Campus. Um, so campus is made up of three different organizations. We've got Gary Comer Middle School, of course, uh, started in 2011, the high school, which started in 2008, and the Youth Center, which kicked it all off in 2006. Um, I'm going to be talking today about our program areas. Uh, so this is kind of a map of, of where we're at, but Mr. Johnson, you can go to the next slide there. Um, you know, we have a number of different program areas in uh, academic and college preparation, sports, fitness, and recreation, uh, civic engagement, uh, cultural uh, and art exploration. You can keep on going there. Uh, social leadership development, urban agriculture, sport, fitness, and recreation. So I'm gonna talk through some of our offerings uh, that we have so far. Um, so first thing that we wanna point out, we've got uh, our mentoring program uh, that'll be open up to 60 students from GCMS this year, students who participate in our mentoring program. Uh, we'll have access to a mentoring group for an hour a week on Wednesdays, as well as individual tutoring time for an hour a week. And I put into the chat here a link to that application. Uh, so feel free to, to log on to apply, uh, click on that link and apply so you can participate in mentoring. Um, keep, you can keep on going. We've also got, uh, if you're not part of that, or if you need help after school, we're going to be running study buddies, which is homework help in the out of school time. So from two to four each day, you can send our instructor, Ms. Ferguson, a message uh, about any question you have on your homework. You can join on a call with her, she'll talk through it. If you need something more in depth though, you can, you can schedule a group session if you and your friends wanna work through an assignment or an individual session if students wanna work through individually. Um, one thing I'm really excited about this year is our cyber cafe. So we know that for many of our scholars, uh, technology is an issue, whether it be having a computer that, that, that's working each and every day, whether it be a stable internet connection or just a quiet place to do, to do work. Uh, so we'll have space for eight middle schoolers to join us Monday through Friday at the center, safe and socially distanced to do school. In that space, Ms. Uh, we'll have a, uh, an instructor there to help out with any homework as well as a tutor to provide that individual support. That'll go from eight to two each day, and so should match up with schedule uh, with class schedules. Um, after school, uh, starting September 21st, we're going to have a ton of programming that happens mostly virtually, but we'll have some in-person 
uh, opportunities as well. So we'll have fitness, mixed uh, sports, and soccer running on in person from four to six on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We'll also have middle school game room and the teen center running Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 3.30 to 7. Um, for media and tech, if that's uh, what you're interested in, our in-person offerings will have a digital design course focused on graphic design that uh, will run on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you're interested in robotics, uh, we'll have robotics going from four to six. We'll also have robotics uh, offered virtually on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, in terms of visual arts, uh, we have two offerings. So, uh, I'm sorry, three offerings. Uh, so we've got uh, visual arts with Ms. Daria, music production, if you want to get into sound engineering, music design, we also have a dance course. Uh, all of that will be offered virtually and in person. Um, we'll also be working with a few partners this year. So Girls in the Game, uh, Chicago Run, and Ensemble Espanol uh, will all be partners that are working with us and they'll be running programs Mondays and Fridays. If any of that sounded, oh, so a couple of important things to know. So we have a virtual and on-site schedule that you'll receive once you register for programs. We'll send that to each family. Some programs will have some specific uh, paperwork they need to fill, fill out above and beyond membership. Uh, and if you choose to join us in person, that includes a snack and dinner each night that you're on site. Um, the last thing I'll say is that we've got orientations coming up uh, each Wednesday at six o'clock for the next three weeks. We'll make sure those uh, that information is sent out to families. Really excited to have you with us uh, and for you to be a part of the, the Comer family. Thanks so much, everybody. Cool. Thank you, Will. Uh, the Youth Center is really a great partner for us. Uh, I wanted to say at the beginning of the uh, presentation, this slide deck is going to be available to everybody. So if there's information going past on the screen that you're not getting a chance to capture, don't worry about that. Um, it's being recorded and will be posted uh, by the end of the day tomorrow, but also the slide deck will be emailed out to everybody who participated. So we're going into the operations portion here, which is definitely the most exciting part of the whole show. Um, before I start, I'm going to have Ms. Hampton, the Assistant Dean of Operations, step in really quickly uh, with some information about registration paperwork. Good evening, everyone. Um, if you have not completed your enrollment paperwork to get your student fully enrolled, uh, listed are the things that are required to make sure that they're up and running. They can receive all of their power school and login info information for first day of school, uh, which is next Tuesday. So that's going to be that school year 21 enrollment packet, which was emailed to you, um, two proofs of address, their physical and immunization record. That physical must be laid must be dated after August 31st of last year. And then for those who apply a birth certificate, if your student has never attended a Chicago public school, and if your student has an IEP or a 504, uh, forward that to me as well. You can reach me at khampton at garycomermiddleschool.org or by fax at 773-439-2169. You're muted. You got to unmute, Brad. Sorry, I was muted there. So I wanted to start off talking about uh, technology. We gave out 190 Chromebooks to our current students last spring. We have Chromebooks on hand for anybody else who needs one. Um, there's really two barriers to technology that we've been experiencing, and one of them is access to devices. So Chromebooks are available at the school during the student supply pickup events, which are running um, tomorrow from 12 to 3, and then Thursday and Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Everybody received scheduled times based on their grade level and last name. If you're not able to make your scheduled time, you can come anytime in those hours that I just mentioned that were open. Um, if you're not available to come in at all this week, then we can make uh, we can make other arrangements. Just reach out to me by email. Uh, bjohnson at garycomermiddleschool.org is me. Um, when we return to in-person learning, those Chromebooks are uh, they're the property of your child, but they're going to need to bring them to the school every day. When they graduate from GCMS after eighth grade, those Chromebooks will be gifted to them and they'll be able to take them on their way and use them through high school and for as long as they last. 
Now, internet access um, is the other barrier of the two barriers I mentioned. So we have been able to provide some hotspots for families that offer free data running through, uh, it was originally running through the end of this past school year. Now it's running through the middle of January and will be extended more um, if it's necessary, if we're not back to in-person. Hotspots are much more difficult for us to source and much more difficult for us to get shipped. We do have some on hand. Um, there are several people who have already reached out for them and we have enough for all of you and we have more. Um, I would encourage people to look at the Chicago Connected program. About 40% of our students qualify for that. Um, and that's a way to get uh, free wireless um, internet connected at your home. Um, and if that's not a possibility for you, please reach out to me. We do have more hotspots. And if you, um, if you do not have access to internet at home, we can make sure that that barrier is removed for you as well. Now, when you are using our tech devices, if you need technical support, Noble has set up a dedicated hotline. Um, the phone number is down at the bottom of the screen there, 833-NOBLE-IT. Uh, that line is staffed 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. every school day. Um, if you leave a voicemail, it's returned by the end of the day, almost any time and always by the next business day. So material distribution, the school supply pickup events that I referred to a minute ago, um, those have been going on since Monday. They were for our returning students Monday and today. Um, new students are scheduled to come in uh, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. We have uh, packets of school supplies, learning at home school supply kits that we are giving away um, for all students who come. Also, if you need a Chromebook, um, this would be the time to pick it up. And if you have any of that registration paperwork um, and you need a way to turn it in other than fax or scan, this is a great opportunity to do that. Um, just to make sure that we're maintaining the safety of families and staff, we ask that only one person come if at all possible. Um, that you observe all social distancing norms and wear a mask. And if at all possible, come within your scheduled time. If that's not possible, as I said, you can come anytime that you're able to. We are gonna have some health and safety guidelines put in place at the school immediately. So beginning September 8th, our uh, main office is gonna be open to essential business for parents. Um, and from that point forward, we're going to have to follow some of these new rules the first set of rules here, and I'm sure you've seen these um, in all sorts of institutions all over the city. Um, these are the guidelines under which any, any visitor to the school um, needs to stay home. So it's, uh, if you've been ill, um, if your symptoms first appeared less than 10 days ago, if you have a fever or any of the more common symptoms of COVID-19, if you're awaiting a test result, or if you've been in close contact with somebody um, who uh, tested positive within the last 14 calendar days. Close contact we're defining as spending more than 15 minutes um, working within six feet of them. When you are in the building, um, even coming into the main office, you'll be needing to wear a face mask at all times. Um, we ask that people please bring their own face masks. Um, there is a temperature check at the door and a symptom screen. And one of our staff members will be there to ask you some really fast questions about your symptoms check your temperature, and then they'll be able to sign you into the building. If there is a confirmed case of COVID-19 at our campus, we have an emergency cleaning and disinfecting process that's going to kick in right away. Any area of the school where the sick person was known to spend time is going to be cleaned and disinfected and then shut down for 48 hours after that. The entire school will be cleaned and disinfected. Um, and as soon as the cleaning process is complete, those parts of the school will be reopened. If you have tested positive for COVID-19 and you've been in our building recently, um, we ask that you contact us right away. Um, we will initiate contact tracing protocols. We're working with the Chicago Department of Public Health on those to make sure that anybody who may have had contact within our building as much as possible um, is, uh, is informed of that contact. There are situations where our entire building may be closed and we will give you as much notice as we possibly can. Um, it's really important that you monitor your emails um, and that you monitor your, uh, your phone as well for any messages that may come that have a, an emergency turnaround time. Um, the state or the city or Chicago Public Schools can mandate school closures and that would affect us as well. We're also able to do that at a network level if we decide that there's an elevated risk and uh, it's something that needs to be done for the safety of all involved. 
We have a resource available to us at the Youth Center. It is the Access Health Clinic. Um, we've been working with them for as long as we've been around. Um, it's located physically inside the Youth Center, um, and they provide a full range of health services similar to any pediatrician's office. Um, and for more information on them, you can go to the uh, Gary Comer um, Youth Center website. So our hours of operation at the building, our main office will be open every school day from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. We also have a remote office um, for any uh, anytime you need to call into Ms. Hampton. But when our main office reopens on September 8th, that main office phone will also become active again. So that should be your first call, your first attempt at contact. Um, our building will be open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, for access for vendors and staff members, but the main office for parents would be 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. In order to make sure that our communication is working smoothly, we ask that you keep us up to date on your phone numbers and your email addresses. Um, I send out a weekly newsletter by email that um, sometimes has a lot of information in it, but it always has important information in it. And uh, I do get reports when emails aren't working, messages get kicked back to me. Um, so I may reach out to you for corrections in that case, but the more proactive you can be and the more you can be on top of communicating those changes to us, the easier it'll be for us to communicate with you. Um, especially now that we don't have the touch point of seeing your kid every day. Um, it's just really important that we're able to communicate smoothly through phone and email. The GCMS newsletter goes out every Thursday by the end of the day. Um, I'll email that out and sometimes there will be attachments to that newsletter. Um, sometimes not, it'll just depend on what needs to be communicated that week. Sometimes there will be individual communications outside of that time frame. I try to avoid that just for the sake of clarity, but if there's something urgent that needs to be communicated or something that is so important that I feel it needs to be pulled out of the newsletter, those might come on an off day of the week. But other than that, you can expect to just hear from me on, uh, on Thursdays. The items in the newsletter are often going to identify the staff member associated with a particular thing. So if, for example, if your question is about enrollment and registration and you see an item in the newsletter about it, Ms. Hampton's name will be identified right next to that and you'll know that she's the correct person to contact. If you're not clear about who to contact about anything, um, you should contact me and I will route your message where it needs to go. Your number one ambassador to the school is going to be your child's advisor, who you're going to meet in just a few more minutes here, um, if you haven't met them already. Um, anytime you're not sure where to go and you're not sure where the information should be coming from, your advisor is going to be your best contact. They're going to be dedicated to just 15 families in the school and you're going to be one of them. Um, if you have something you need to convey to all of their teachers at once, going through their advisors, the most efficient way to do that. If you have questions um, where you need a faster turnaround time, uh, contacting their advisor is gonna be your fastest way to do that. All right, so without any further ado, we are going to attempt to orchestrate a big shift here. So the advisory meetings are next. Um, your advisors all sent you links to get to their meetings. I'm also going to post those links in the chat box. So if you're not able to see your chat bar, you should um, change your view settings so that you can see it, if at all possible. Um, when you click on those links, you're going to be taken to an entirely separate meeting to meet with your child's advisor for 30 to 45 minutes. I'm going to stay here in the main meeting. So if you have any complications getting into that meeting, um, you can bounce back to me and I'll help people out. Um, as soon as the, the bulk of the people are out of this room, I'll help out the people who are left. So I'm gonna start here with our sixth grade advisories. One second. Okay. So your chat bar now, you should see all seven of our sixth grade advisors. I'm just gonna give people a minute to look through those. If you are a sixth grade student or a sixth grade parent, go ahead and click on your advisory so you can go to that meeting. Somebody asked me earlier if we could have some sort of hold music. Um, I'm open to suggestions on that. <laughs> I 
Okay, I'm gonna throw in the seventh grade advisory links now. So if you have, oh, I'm sorry, I did sixth grade again. Hold on one second. If you have a child in a seventh grade advisory, those are the links to those meetings right there. 